Sorry for the long delay. Uh, I caught my cold, and I'm still pretty sniffly, so I hope the audio for this episode doesn't sound too terrible. But in this episode, we're going to do a little bit of world building. A very little bit of world building. Uh, a minuscule, tiny amount of world building. Specifically, this plane that we've been sitting on, we're going to be replacing it. Um, planes are wholly unsuitable. As, uh, as far as RPG terrain goes, they are just about the most boring thing imaginable. So, what we're going to use instead is, of course, everyone's favorite terrain. But before we do that, let's go ahead and import the default assets for terrain. Now, your Unity install should come with these same assets, so we're not using anything special, but it comes with a couple of textures that are nice, so uh, we will use them. And now, let's go ahead and add that terrain. And you can see that it got added over there. So we're just going to go ahead and move it to where we want it to be. Oh. There we go. Is it 500? Is that it? Uh, it looks like it's 1,000. So it looks like it's 2,000 wide. I can never remember, but uh, that is fine. So we are now in the middle of this terrain, as you can see. But uh, there's a lot of small little details that we want to take care of before we get started. First off is this plane needs to go. And the second off is that everyone in this area needs to be moved upwards. Because uh, otherwise they'll fall beneath the terrain. Now obviously this terrain is not yet ready for prime time. So if you've never created a terrain before, I'm going to show you how to do all that stuff. If you have, go ahead and do something else today, because that's what we're doing. Along with sniffling loudly. So we need to define some textures for our terrain, and when we imported the assets, we got a bunch. So we're going to use some nice uh, textures for our ground, uh, starting with good dirt, and that'll be the default texture. We're going to also go ahead and add in uh, hilly grass. Rocky grass. and cliff. Pardon me. Alas, OBS does not have a pause button. Alright, so now we have all of these textures. So what does that mean for us in terms of being able to paint them and stuff? Well, first things first, you see how we've got this weird error happening? Um, I'm not sure what causes that, but it's new to this version of Unity. It might be the fact that there is a screen here, I'm not sure. Um, either way, we're going to ignore it. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint in these textures. And since we're just doing this kind of arbitrarily, you can see that we can just paint it. Uh, this brush is, however, much, much too small. And the opacity is much, much too high. There we are. So you can just go ahead and make yourself whatever terrain you'd like using these brushes. Um, and this is just sort of to get us started. In the end, we're probably going to be using a very specific layouts for these brushes, but we just don't want it to be completely blank. Now you can see that we have some very, very strong repeating here. Uh, all of these tiles are set to be 15 by 15, and that means that they reinforce each other when it comes to repeating. So generally speaking, I will actually edit these textures and make them so that they are different sizes. Just so that we don't have a problem with them repeating awkwardly. And they'll still repeat, of course, but it should be far less noticeable when you're on the ground. Now, what does this look like? Well, let's go ahead and play. Whoa. We are way up in the air here. So once you're down here, you can see that that nasty ass tiling really isn't visible at all. Uh, and that's something you do have to watch out for because if we were on a hill or something, we would have to worry about the tiling in the distance. Fortunately, there are a number of techniques you can do to reduce the tiling. The technique I showed you is very, very basic uh, and didn't work in this particular situation very well because this tile here uh, really, or is it this one? That's this one. Yeah, it really has bad tiling, so we need to just ditch it. 
a little bit more there, break it up, but whatever. Uh, what we're going to do now is paint some terrain. Now normally I would use my tablet for this, but um, a mouse will work fine. And you can go ahead and build whatever sort of shapes you want, but one of the things I actually recommend you do first is you go to the flatten terrain, uh, paint height, get a nice big flat brush and set everything to maybe 100 because that way uh, and max opacity because that way what happens is um, uh, flatten in there so that way what happens is you have space to go down if uh, if everything is as it starts you can't actually reduce the height of anything so if we wanted to do something like this where we go down that would have been impossible so I generally don't start at zero I generally start at some other value a hundred is fine so let's go ahead and create ourselves a little bit of terrain here and now you're gonna to want to remember just how big this is this is the maximum size brush so although although it looks quite small at the moment it is not small at all it is huge uh, and what we're gonna do is we are actually going to start to bring this down and do a little bit more detailed painting down in here just to give us a uh, you know a little bit more of a good feel for our terrain and obviously you want to spend a lot of time on this this is your level med this is your level maker uh, unlike the um, tile map thing I created this is how you you do it here you don't have you don't have tiles you put down you shape the world like this um, and it works fine but you do need to be careful that everything looks right and in this case what we've got is we've got a whole bunch of textures we randomly stuck here and they don't fit the uh, the terrain that we are trying to create so what we can do is we can just retexture it but you can see how that's much much too strong of a texture so let's bring the target strength strength down because this texture blocks really badly so we don't want it to be very strong or you'll get a very very blocky look to it and then we're going to go ahead and put in some of this guy and then we can put in this guy over here somewhere you know whatever you need and change out the brush shape if you don't think that that shape is perfect now if you hold uh, if you hold shift and control while in paint mode uh, over here you get different effects but in this mode there is no such thing as erasing a texture you have to just paint over it with something else um, but the problem is that our target strength is screwing us over so be careful about that in general I go with a very high target strength and I lower the opacity if I want to do something else alright so let's take a look at our floating people here and let's bring them into line with where we actually are oh we're still editing um, I guess I'll just manually select them and let's just bring them down to uh, 105 not 1.5 and also not Z um, there we go. And when we hit play, we now have some fantasy terrain around us. Now, obviously, this terrain is huge and empty and it doesn't have anything in it, but you can see where you would begin to have all sorts of uh, terrain as you would prefer. And of course, you can continue to edit your terrain more or less forever, but there are some other details that we want to do with our terrain. Uh, we have a lot of instincts um, uh, to stick with the kind of same brush all the time. We want to be like, well, we're doing this editing like this, so this is the right way to do it. But there are, in fact, lots of other details for terrain, um, and that includes uh, things like... Um, hold on, let me just add a little bit more here, even though I said that. You know, no, there we are. Uh, and then you can always blur it with uh, this, just to soften it a little bit. All right, so there are lots of other things we can do with the terrain, and one of my favorites is the grass tool. So over here in paint details, you can see how we've got the option to add details. We can add detail meshes or grass textures. Both of these are great. Detail, mes detail meshes are perfect for rocks, and grass textures are perfect for um, grass. So let's go ahead and pick a grass. And again, we got a couple of them in with us when we uh, first started, when we imported our stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. You can change all these values all you want, but keep in mind uh, what it'll look like is probably a little bit of a surprise. 
So it's it's often not easy to detect, you know, to determine what exactly you're aiming to do. The other thing to keep in mind is that grass has a maximum texture draw distance. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with the clipping here, but that's okay. There's a maximum draw distance for grass where if you are further away, it just won't render. So you can see the grass here, but if we were to go over here and paint like loads of grass, you see how you can't see it here in the editor, but as soon as you zoom in, you can see it. It's the same way for our hero. We can see the grass we put in close, but the grass we painted over there is invisible, and we can just walk towards it for a couple of days and we'll eventually reach it, uh, and it'll pop in. See? You can adjust the grass draw distance. Um, I don't remember where that is. I think it's in the settings. Let's take a look. Render settings, perhaps? Mm. I don't happen to remember where the draw distance is uh, for these. It might be here. Ah, yes, here it is. Uh, so we've got the detail distance and the de detail density and all that stuff. You can go ahead and do whatever you'd like to do with this. It depends on what sort of computer you want to be running on and all that stuff. Don't forget you can change it programmatically uh, if you'd like. You have to program that in. Uh, there is no base, you know, default for that, but it is a valuable um, uh, thing. So let's add some more grass, and what we're going to do is we're going to lower the target strength so that we don't get such quite such thick clusters. See? Just get little clusters. And what we can do here is we can actually add another one of these grasses. Uh, so let's go ahead and add another grass texture. And we're going to use the exact same grass texture here, but we're going to really, really change all of these values. Uh, we're going to make it so that it's twice as big, and we're going to make it so that it is uh, not nearly as um, healthy looking. So this grass, we're going to paint using a heavier brush, something like this, uh, and a smaller brush, something like this. Uh, and you can see what we get is we get these these patches of large, dry, dead grass. Um, when you are painting stuff like this, obviously I just kind of throwing this I'm just kind of throwing this together with no plan or forethought. You probably should have some kind of idea in mind as to what this terrain is supposed to be. But keep in mind that just randomly using large brushes to scatter uh, grass around is not normally ideal because that grass will end up looking really unrealistic. Grass grows in patches, and it looks terrible if you just scatter it around totally randomly. Uh, and it also looks terrible if you use the same grass texture or the same grass object all the time. Even if you use the same grass texture, if the values are different, it will look better. So in this case, uh, the tall grass that I put in might be too tall, because it is, in fact, huge, as you can see. And also, you can see how it's got this billboard situation. Now, billboards work fine for tiny, tiny grass, but if you're doing big grass, you can't do it like that. So what we can do is we can go into Edit Details here, and if you turn off the billboard, what you'll get is you'll get uh, 3D modeled grass, which doesn't look as bad, but it does look flat. So that's also not ideal. What do you do? Well, the first thing you do is you make sure that your grass is not this big. I had forgotten our character is quite small, um, which is uh, just, you know, something that I, I never fixed, but that's okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and edit these grasses. The great thing is this actually edits all of the grass in the scene, so you don't have to delete and repaint everything. And there, that should be a little bit more grass-like. But the other thing you can do is you can add in meshes. And that, I, mean, I usually use meshes for rocks, but if you're going to use tall grass, see, for short grass, the billboarding isn't so bad. But for tall grass, you're going to want to have meshes. And you can add detail meshes as well as detail billboards. The problem with detail meshes is that you have to know how to build them, and none of them come by default here in uh, uh, the Unity system. So you need like uh, a small rock or two, something like that. And I don't have any built, pre-built. I do have a sack. Shall we see what happens when I choose a sack? That didn't... I have to, I have to add, don't I? There we are. So here's my sack. 
and you can see that I don't see anything happening. The reason for that is because it's not the proper kind of mesh. Uh, there are a lot of specific values that you need to worry about, things like um, uh, materials and faces and all sorts of other crazy stuff that I'm not very familiar with. Um, but if we change this into vertex lit, you can see them suddenly pop into existence. So there's a lot of questions as to exactly how this works. And rather than try and work it out yourself, I strongly recommend that you uh, go and get yourself something from Unity. There are plenty of kits from the Unity Asset Store that include lots of detail rocks and grasses. And I know that there is an urge to make it yourself. But in this case, it's not a very good urge. Uh, that's, a, that's something where you get a pro. They'll help you out. Pro can do it in no time flat. You can get it for free or for five bucks or whatever. Um, and you don't want to try and build these meshes yourself unless you have a lot of time to dedicate to uh, um, to the idea. Still, the billboard grass is included and it works fine. Now, obviously, there are still some things that we could be doing on this terrain. We could add some roads. Uh, we could add houses, we could add all sorts of stuff, but I just wanted to get us started on the terrain. Uh, now you can see over there we've got a mountain, and that mountain looks awful because we can see the repeating texture. Well, we've got a couple of options. One option is that we can change the texture so that it doesn't repeat quite as badly. Uh, I guess it was this guy over here. But another option is we can add some trees. Now, good news is um, Unity does in fact come with some trees, uh, like this guy. I'm pretty sure that's an actual tree. Now, I'm pretty sure that they also come with other trees, uh, but I can't remember... I didn't happen to see them, and I can't remember whether that's still true or not. They used to come with plenty of trees. Uh, there are some downsides to placing trees like this. One of them is that the brush is really awkward. You can't get the nice pattern brushes. Uh, and another one of them is that these trees don't really exist. Uh, you can walk through them, so they're really only suitable for background. But let's go ahead and edit in another tree here. And uh, you can see how it's the same tree. Oh, wait, hold on. You can see how it's the same tree. So what we need to do is if we wanted to create another tree, we have to track down that tree. And that would be in terrain assets, palm, palm. And if we drop this into the scene somewhere and we go over to it, you can see how this is actually a poly surface. Whoa, this isn't a tree at all. What is this? Um, interesting. So the palm that we've been using is in fact a standalone mesh that was included with the new version of Unity, apparently. Uh, it used to be that we could build trees using all sorts of cool tree logic. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. Tree creator. There it is. So it's just a thing I forgot to import. So we'll pull in this tree creator here. I wonder if the tree creator comes with a rock. That'd be neat. Alright, so we put in some palm trees, but this is not the sort of terrain for palm trees. So let's go ahead and hold down control, or is it shift? Shift and delete them. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and delete them from here too. Now we're going to add a tree, and we're going to choose one of the real trees here. Here's a big tree. This is the default that I remember from so long ago. So the big tree is a uh, is a proper tree, uh, but I have to actually hit add. There we go. But you can see how it doesn't appear very big, and that's just because our terrain is much larger than you might think. But one of the fun things about this kind of tree is that you can change it um, by going into the tree creator here. And you can drop a big tree in. And then you can actually edit this using this node editor that you can see over here on the right. Or anything else, of course. You can change the tree seed or whatever. Um, and this allows you to create any tree you'd like. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, I'm having a really hard time with the... There we are. It's a really powerful tool, and I'm just going to show you uh, a couple of small things that you might, you know, like to see. For example, if I if I drag this to here, you can see how that changes the tree. What I've done is I've put a lot of the leaves inside of the tree rather than at the tip of the tree. 
So if they're all at the tip, you can see how they're all at the outsides. Whereas if I pull it down to here, come on, they move in a little bit. And if I pull it down to here, come on, they move in a little bit. And you can see how those flowered leaves keep moving up the branch as I move it down. Another thing you can do is you can change uh, this so that we have multiple branch groups and all sorts of other stuff. You can create anything you'd like. And of course, you can change the nature of the leaves and the nature of the flowers. In this case, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to change the size of the tree. And I can do that simply by dragging this. Oh, that's the size of those leaves. While amusing, that is not what I intended to do. Select the base note here. And now. Hmm. I guess each node has to be edited individually here. Uh, I'm not getting any option to change their size. I have forgotten how to change their size. And uh, it's already been 20 minutes. 21 minutes. And I'm still kind of sick, so I'm sorry that this hasn't been the best... Uh, little tutorial, but I wanted to show you that you can build your own trees, and then you can save them as a new a new prefab with a new name, and then paint more of them, and you can have multiple kinds of trees that way. The other thing I wanted to show you is, you see, see, how, see how these are dark right now? The trees are billboarded at a certain range, the same way that grass is billboarded, and then when you get close, they pop into existence. And this is actually a fairly good feature in terms of it being difficult to notice. Um, if you are in a forest and it's set to a low range, you will notice, but otherwise it's pretty nice. And if we go into the game and we look over there, you can see how those trees are very, very noticeable. Uh, and we can use them to hide any imperfections in the landscape if we'd like, uh, in addition to things like uh, large boulders that you place manually and that sort of stuff. Sorry about the long um, episode today with the not very much detail because I'm still sneezing and stuff, but uh, next time we'll move on to something else. Not quite sure what yet.